Clancy Pasta presents, I work at the only blockbuster in the world. Written by Wayward Companion and narrated by Clancy. I work at the only blockbuster in the world. Now, you might be thinking, hey, I have a blockbuster in my town, and I know everyone who works there. Well, surprise, I work there. Someone else might also be thinking, well, I have one in my city. I work there too. I might not be on the floor every second of the day, but I'm still there. That's the thing about blockbusters. To cut down on spending, the big guys upstairs got rid of all the extra stores and left mine alone. Now, my store is in place of every other blockbuster there was in the world. I also live in my blockbuster. Seeing as I'm really the original employee of this location, I was told one day that I'm not allowed to leave once the stores merge. There I was, 17 years old, just trying to keep my summer job and scared out of my mind of the big guys upstairs. I said yes, of course. My room is a tiny closet that breaks off of the main break room. It's big enough for my makeshift hammock and a side table with my bare minimum survival materials, but there's no wiggle room for luxury. No one else who works in my blockbuster comes into my room. Not because I have, like, a privacy issue or something. I just can't find it. I once told one of the newer employees, Janice, to grab me my glasses from my side table since my vision was acting up that day. She walked into the break room, and none of us have seen Janice since. But when I tried to open my room that night, I had to grab something to cover the doorknob with. It was really fucking hot. I've seen a couple of people sharing their weird work stories on here, so I figured I might as well try my hand at it as well. I've got some interesting ones to talk about. We're open 24-7, so you can imagine the people who come into a blockbuster at 3am on a Wednesday during a snowstorm. Speaking of which, I guess that's the first story I can tell. It was mid-December of last year and snowing like hell. Thankfully, I was alone in the store and it was, in fact, 3am. So I brought out my smaller blanket from my room and was sitting at the register with it wrapped around my body. I had an old VHS popped into the TV on the cash wrap, something that I would usually have no interest in but felt drawn to tonight. Then, halfway through the good part, the front door swung open and I for a second thought it came off the hinges completely. There, standing in the entrance, was an old woman who looked like she had just stepped off stage from performing Snow White as the Evil Queen. The weird thing was, I couldn't see her hands at all. Not like they were tucked into the literal cloak she was wearing, but like she didn't own hands at all. Oh well. I figured, not my problem. I don't get paid to worry about people's hands. The old woman just stood in the doorway for a couple seconds. Eventually, I raised a hand and waved at her. Hey, uh, welcome to Blockbuster. Just so you know, we're having a rent one, get one of all our romantic comedies and... She didn't acknowledge me, just shuffled her way into the store and towards my register. The way she walked around was weird, too fluid and without any real movement. I felt a nervous creeping into my stomach the closer she got. Her white hair was all stringy and in patches, complementing her equally colorless skin. Her eyes though, those are what really creeped me out. The irises were huge, dark brown rimmed pupils. The blackness of her pupil took up a good percentage of the eye itself. There was barely any white to be seen, and they were opened wide. Open your eyes as wide as you can, and then try to go wider. That's only a fraction of how wide hers were. Her mouth was slightly open, enough to let air pass through, and it made a sound like a squeaky wheel. I could see that the inside of her mouth was grey-toned. The romantic comedies are over in that section over there, if you were wondering. I recommend You've Got Mail, I said, keeping on my customer service voice and smile. The big guys upstairs don't care what the customer looks like, as long as they rent something. She brought a veiny hand to her mouth, gingerly touching the area around her bottom lip. I followed her eyes to see that she was staring at my TV screen behind me, watching the tape. If you like this one, I can see if we have any in stock for you. 
No reply, really. Just a couple gaspy noises and a little head tilt. She looked like a puppy for a second. Slowly, as to not startle her, I took the VHS out of the TV and put it back in the unmarked box I found it in, placing it on the counter. It's all yours for $2.99, I said, just feeling uncomfortable at this point and wanting her out. Her whole body was vibrating as she looked down at the box with a soft, oh, escaping those weird lips. She held it with both hands as if it was her firstborn child. I watched her as she painfully slowly made complete eye contact with me and walked backwards out of the store, without paying, mind you. When the door is shut, I just turn in my swivel chair towards one of the security cameras the big guys upstairs have installed to watch us and gave it a little shrug, knowing full well that tomorrow I'd have a strongly written letter slipped under my door from the big guys upstairs themselves. And I did. It just told me everything I already knew. That what happened was illegal and unacceptable, and as punishment I'd be going another year's worth of limited pay and limited means. Nothing really I'm not used to already. I'm already backed up three years worth of pay. That doesn't bother me much. I don't have any real use for money anyway. Not anymore. I'll tell one more story and then I'll go. There was someone who used to work here. I think his name was Elvis? Eli? Something like that. He was a really unmemorable guy. Every time I try to think about some standout feature the guy had, I just get this huge headache and need to lie down. The one thing I can remember is when he came in early, kind of in a hurry, and carrying a rather large suitcase. Of course, my first thought was to ask, Hey Evan, what's in the case? But he just ignored me and started shoveling VHS tapes into his jacket. I looked at the clock on my computer and saw that it was 2 o'clock. His shift wasn't supposed to start until 2.30, and that's when I took my first break in days. If you want to clock in early so I can go on my break a little earlier, be my guest, dude, I said. I caught a glimpse of his uniform on underneath his jacket, so I assumed he was here to work eventually. Elliot paused dead in his tracks, tape boxes still spilling into his jacket. He stared me dead in the eyes and said, do you have any fucking clue how important this is? He sounded absolutely fuming. So I let him be and went back to my TV, only looking over occasionally to see that he had cleared out the entire vague history section. I figured, what the hell, as not many people wander over and traverse that section. When he finished, somehow, shoveling the last box into his coat, he bundled all the way to his neck and tossed me a bag with about four dollars in dimes. I never saw Elijah again after that, and later that week I got an email from the big guys upstairs that read something like, Hey, quit messing with the security cameras. The one that scans back and forth between vague history and horror for children is all blurry, from 2.03pm to 11.46pm last Tuesday. I sent back, Got it. I'll see what's faulty in them. Did Emmett send in his two weeks, or did he quit on the spot? They said, Who? And that was the last time I ever really thought about the guy. Those are just two quick little anecdotes I could think of right off the top of my head. My hour is over now. Time to head back on the floor. If you got any questions, feel free to leave me something to read. Maybe I'll answer them on my next break, but who knows when that'll be. In the meantime... Have a good one. Part 2 I only have a 30 minute break today and the big guys upstairs are pretty picky about timing, so let's jump right into it. First things first, I got a message from the big guys upstairs the other night. I found it tucked into the register drawer with their official stamp that morning. Apparently they caught me using the work computers to go online and upload my first post. They didn't really say anything concrete about whether or not they wanted me to delete it or not. But they did tell me to send a message out to whoever keeps leaving the cardboard cutout of a bike leaning against the bike stands. The message is this. Stop. Stop it. If you cease these threats now, we will give you what you seek. 
but only if you vow never to step foot on our property again. I have never seen a cardboard cutout of a bike leaning against our bike stands. I don't really see why it's such a bad thing either way, but if that's what they wanted me to say, who am I to withhold important sounding information to the public? I also wanted to let anyone that was planning on buying something from the ice cream freezers know, you should probably wait until next week to do that. The cookie sandwiches are leaking again and it takes us a little while to clean out the inside. It got all over the other products, now we also have to order all new stock. If anyone has any suggestions on keeping our food products from leaking, please let me or the big guys upstairs know. Especially since the food we have in store is usually the food I live off of. I've already had to fight off some patrons from the freezer. The product is leaking, ma'am. You, you don't want that. What's a little water going to do to an ice cream sandwich? Believe me, ma'am, I wish it was water. Now please, get off the freezer before I call security. There were some people who were leaving some pretty negative remarks about the big guys upstairs in my last entry. Remarks that I have to disagree with, really. The big guys upstairs work really hard to keep this place awake, and while I don't agree with some of their business tactics, I can't knock them for how long they've kept this company going. That, and... I don't think they believe me when I tell them that other people are the ones who are saying those things and not me. I told them that and they asked who the hell would bother reading about a Blockbuster employee slacking off on the job. This week is, unfortunately, Employee Appreciation Week. That's the week that the big guys upstairs have us fill out this long form full of really, really specific questions, and then evaluate them to find the Alpha Employee of the Month. I don't mind not getting employee of the month, ever. I mean, if I'm literally the one who never leaves the store and always has to deal with the whack jobs that come crawling in, sometimes literally crawling into the store, and... Whatever. I don't mind. The paperwork is just time consuming. Alpha employee usually goes to Chloe, someone who only works Tuesdays and Thursdays but gets extra points because she gives a tray of brownies to the big guys upstairs every month and always sweeps within the camera's line of sight. We all say your brownies are way too flat, Chloe. That's why you can fit them under the door. Yesterday we got a phone call. This is sort of out of the ordinary, seeing as we haven't got a phone call in about two years, and the phone just sits on the wall collecting dust and making friends with the spiders. The only other person working at the time was Jacob, and he is physically incapable of using the phone, so it was all up to me. Thanks for calling your local blockbuster. How can we help you today? I watched Jacob give me a weird look for using the official greeting. The other line was silent for the longest time. I was about to hang up when the very low, monotone voice of a man said, Do you have my tape? Obviously, a little confused, I asked Jacob, Hey dude, do we have any tapes on hold? And he just shook his head while sorting the hyper-visual section. I'm sorry, we don't seem to have anything on hold right now. Could I get your name and number so I can call you back once we... You have it. I can hear it. I looked around the store. The only things that were playing any audio were the preview TVs and the cash wrap TV which had just finished playing the tape I had given to the old lady. Oh yeah, I have that back now. That's an entirely different story. The man on the phone spoke again. I hear it behind you. Behind me is where my TV is, if you couldn't put two and two together yourself. Uh, I replied. Sorry, I just found it in the return bin and figured it was one of yours. You can come pick it up whenever, if you want. You will know when I am there. He hung up after saying that, but for the next hour, my ears were freezing, and I had half a mind to stick them in the break room microwave for a second, but that would force poor Jacob to take care of the whole floor by himself for a couple minutes, and the guy isn't ready for that. Not really knowing whether or not that meant the man was going to show up that day, I took the tape out of the TV, rewound it, and stuck it back in its box. Speaking of which, I got that tape back the day after I posted my original entry. 
The old lady didn't return it or anything, not that I know of. It just appeared on my side table in my room. I figured it wasn't that bad of a thing for it to show back up, seeing as now we wouldn't have to worry about tracking down some random woman for late fees. When I picked it up, it felt... slimy. Like it was just in a dog's mouth or something. I had to use mittens to keep my hands from getting too gross. I gave it a quick wipe down and it had been in my TV since then. I don't know why I have such a hard time working without it playing somewhere in the background. It's not even that interesting, it's mostly just wide shots of snowy landscapes with white noise in the distance. Maybe I just need the ambience. No one really complains when I have it on, they just linger in the windows a little too long, staring at the screen before slowly getting into their cars to leave. Either way, I still haven't heard from the man who claimed to own the tape, so for the time being, it still belongs to Blockbuster. Terry just came in to let me know that the employee appreciation forms have been dropped off. She looked visibly shaken, so the big guys upstairs must have came to personally give them to us. I just barely miss them, which I'm sure I'll get some shit for. I have one of the forms in front of me now. It's this huge 24-page novella of really intrusive questions like, Who was the first person you thought about eating? And, when did your mother know? Nothing else, just, when did your mother know? I guess I should start filling this out soon. Late forms get thrown out and the proper punishments are given shortly after. And no one likes that. I have a good 15 minutes left of my break anyway. Good starting point. Until next time, have a good one. Part 3 well, I turned in my employee appreciation application, and by turned in, I mean I put it in the break room microwave and hoped for the best. If I'm lucky, it'll get picked up by tomorrow. If I'm unlucky, someone will completely miss it and it'll be reheated along with their lunch. Either way, I think I have a pretty good shot this year. Won't know the results until next Monday. A quick update on that tape that keeps being claimed and showing back up in the store. I actually decided to sit and watch it with my full attention on it before I went to sleep last night. It's still a mostly blank, snowy landscape, but this time I saw the tiniest pixel in the background. Just one tiny dark spot on the screen that I tried to wipe away at first, assuming it was just a smudge on my TV. It was moving in a sort of wavering fashion, like when it's super hot and things seem like they're swimming around. The spot stayed in that one position the entire time the tape played, accompanied by the same white noise. The guy who said it was his hasn't shown up yet, so I'll update again if anything else happens with it in the meantime. Some people left me some questions, so I figured I'd take a second to answer. The first question wanted to know if we eat people here. I'm going to be honest, I don't know nor do I care what my coworkers eat outside of work. All I know is that I don't. I live off of junk food and whatever leftovers are in the fridge, courtesy of forgetful people. Speaking of which, someone wanted to know if I could order something off of Amazon, and the answer, unfortunately, is no. I made the mistake of asking whether or not I could receive mail while employed here back when I signed the paperwork that sealed my fate. All I'll say about that is it was the first time I saw who my employers were. That, and what address would I send it to? I also got a question about where we get our movies, which I assumed was common knowledge. The big guys upstairs buy tapes in bulk from wherever, and they wind up in the back, boxes piled up to the ceiling sometimes, and then we put them out on the floor. Nothing special there. Last question I really wanted to answer. Do we get any famous people? That made me think of the first story I wanted to tell today. About a year ago, John fucking Travolta came in. I swear on my life, it was either 1977 era John Travolta or someone who was a carbon copy of the guy. He came into the store one day absolutely drenched in sweat. His suit was bone dry, but the rest of him was just soaked. He came in and demanded to buy every movie he had ever even entertained the thought of acting in. We don't usually let people buy our movies lately. Money's tight and all, but 
This is John Travolta we're talking about. He had a pretty big stack too, so the big guys upstairs can't complain that much. He paid exactly $45,103.09 and tipped me with $3. So I think it's a win-win for everyone in the end. I watched him take his new collection out the door, toss them all on the ground, and quite gleefully set them all on fire. He left shortly after the fire went out, so I sent one of our newbies, Michaela, out to vacuum up the ash from the parking lot. Never saw him again, but if anyone does, let him know we have 20 boxes full of Gotti. That's the only famous person I've ever seen come in. Some exciting customer stories for you. First off, a lady came in right when I started my shift yesterday. Everything seemed as normal as it gets around here. For a second, I thought this was going to be a simple in-and-out transaction. I started getting a weird feeling once the woman approached an employee named Nico. She looked like she was getting quite visibly frustrated after he answered her question, even though the question was just, Do you have Garfield Gets Real yet? Nico pointed her to the surrealist animation section and continued dusting the snacks. As he turned his back, her face got more and more red. She stood there behind him for a few more seconds, then zeroed on to me and beelined for the counter. She laid her palms flat on the counter, expression locked in pure anger. I want the number for corporate, she growled, now red as a stop sign. I told her, keeping my voice calm, I'm sorry ma'am, we don't have an exact corporate number anymore. I can give you the contact information for my superiors if you'd like. This facility is ridiculous. You people can't see that I need assistance? Uh, I blinked at her. We here at Blockbuster take pride in our ability to accommodate any sort of disability or ability that our customers have. I'd be happy to help you out with anything that you need. The woman clenched her fist. I would expect that, but I would also expect you to see what is wrong with me. I said the only excuse I could think of that was actually true. My vision isn't what it used to be. I should be able to get the services I need without having to disclose what makes me uncomfortable disclosing. What happened to the good old days when the staff knew what their customers needed right away? She ranted. At this point, I didn't know how to respond or what was happening anymore. Ma'am, I tried. You look completely fine. If there's something you need from us, I'm sorry, but we don't have anyone working today who can read minds. Perhaps you should come back when Christine is working. Or Kelly. She's super good at reading auras. She completely ignored me. Give me the stupid information for your superiors. I need someone of importance to know about this. She started angry crying by then. So I scrawled how to contact the big guys upstairs on a piece of receipt paper and gingerly placed it on the counter for her to take. She stuffed it into her tote bag and stormed out the door. This morning, I got a message from the big guys upstairs that explained that the woman was very upset that we didn't realize she has limited steps she's allowed to take in a day and didn't want to waste them going across the store. I'm sure you guys can agree with me when I say, crazy customers, am I right? They also told me that from now on we should always have at least one clairvoyant employee on the floor at all times. And if we can't, that I better brush up on my mind reading skills, which I have none of. So let's hope that Christine doesn't do much outside of work. The next story is something that happened today. Someone else was working the register, but I still got called up to help out because I'm the only one who knows how to solve problems in this damn place. I went behind the counter with Gary and faced a very unfriendly looking patron. Placed on the counter was a badly, badly damaged copy of Rango, the movie with Johnny Depp playing a lizard. And when I say damaged, I mean this thing was beyond repair. The ribbon was pulled out and strewn around the cassette itself. It looked like something was chewing on the edges. Some parts were stained, the whole nine yards. This customer would like to return this tape that they claim they bought from us, Gary explained. Not rented bought. 
The fact that this person bought the tape was the first odd thing I noticed. Like I mentioned earlier, we don't usually let people buy our tapes nowadays, unless it's Life or Death or John Travolta. I poked at the tape. Yeah, we can't take this back. This is way too damaged to try to put out on the shelves again. The person crossed their arms and frowned. This is how I bought it. I don't want it anymore and need my money back. I... I get that, I said. I just can't offer you money if I'm not going to get anything in return. You're getting this tape back, obviously. They shoved it forward a little bit. I used a pen sitting on the counter to move it back to them. I bought it like that, they repeated. I really don't think any of us would sell you a tape that looks like that. I gestured to the mess of a tape and hair tangled up on the counter. There's nothing I can do for you. That's when I noticed the thick fog beginning to spill through the aisles. The person was babbling more excuses and yelling at me that, yes, you did sell it to me like this. You wouldn't take no for an answer. And with every word, the fog began to rise higher and higher. It got to the point where I couldn't see the back wall anymore. And that's when I knew I had to get this person out of here as soon as possible. They weren't the only customer in the store, and I could already hear the cries and complaints from others. Look, I'll give you a free ice cream sandwich tonight behind the store if you just leave the tape here and rent another movie for a week at least. The best bargain I could think of at that point and also almost total bullshit, as I'm not physically capable of leaving the store. But, it worked. They stomped into the comedy section, and brought up the Emoji Movie. I quickly checked them out, and they went on their way, taking their fog with them. As soon as they went out the door, the floor was completely cleared, and I mean completely. The patrons that were previously browsing the store were gone too. I'm not really complaining, because that meant I could take my break earlier and for a little longer. To avoid talking your ears off, I'll end this entry here. Go ahead and leave any new questions you may have for me to answer in the next part. I really enjoy seeing people actually being interested in my boring job. Thanks for reading. Have a good one. Part 4 Sorry for the complete radio silence, folks. I got caught in a pretty nasty time loop after a storm hit, so I've been living the last week I posted over and over for a couple weeks now. I'll explain later. There's some questions to take care of. Someone asks if I have family that visits. Short answer, no. Long answer, I'm not sure if any of them even remember I'm still alive. I haven't heard or seen anyone from my immediate or extended family since I started working here back in the day. I tried calling the first few days using my allowed phone time during the month, but all I got in response was an answering machine that was vaguely threatening and oddly specific. If I remember correctly, it went something along the lines of, We're sorry, we cannot come to the phone right now. Leave a message. However, if you are someone who abandoned your purity in order to live a life of transgressions, never call again. Or something like that. So no, no one comes to call. I do have some favorite customers, and by some, I'm talking about a group of six frat guys who come in every third Saturday of the month, do the same 360 around the store, rent one copy of Jill and Jack for each of them, and then say, thanks, all in unison before leaving. The whole reason I like them so much is how routine they are, and how quickly they get in and out. Nothing better than a smooth transaction. As for a favorite movie from 60s or earlier, Manos, The Hands of Fate. Hands down, no pun intended. No particular reason, I just like how bad it is. That, and it's the only movie that we preview over the screens that doesn't feature a chorus of children screaming. I swear, children are chaotic neutral. They'll scream just because they have vocal cords and nothing better to do. Trust me. We get a lot of those parents who don't care about the preservation of the employees' eardrums. And about the whole ordering food thing. Me and a couple other employees tried ordering pizza for fun on a real slow Monday night, right? We wait three hours, and still nothing. 
so we sent Julie outside to go look for the guy, to see if he got lost in the parking lot or something. When she came back in, she said there was nothing out there but a really bad smell. I've given up on it. You guys seem really into my eating habits, so by all means, go ahead and visit your local blockbuster and drop me off some food. I'm a sucker for some salmon. So, the time loop thing. I'd gotten some messages about a storm brewing, so I started the day like you usually do when opening a store during an impending storm. Boarded up the windows, covered the bottoms of the doors, dimmed the lights, things like that. A couple people came in in the early morning, an old lady looking to stock up on Tarantino flicks to binge during the storm, a little girl who got like five movies from the horror for children section, a guy who wanted to rent a Hershey bar. By that night, luckily, absolutely no one was in the movie renting mood, so me and Will got some time to chill out with some stale popcorn and those suckers you put the sour stuff on. Next thing I knew, it went from 10am to 7pm, and it was raining full force. The lightning and thunder was absolutely raging. The power went off a couple times, so me and Will decided to close up early and end the day before anything could get damaged. The next day, I got another message about a storm. Pretty normal for two storms in a row to happen, right? Boarded up the windows, covered the doors, turned down the lights. Then I started to notice things. A lady asking for all our Tarantino movies. A girl spending way too much time staring at a copy of The Shining, the animated musical. A guy giving me a really hard time for not letting him rent a damn chocolate bar for three nights. I asked Will, Hey, uh, when do you work next? Will responded, uh, Friday. Now, at the time, it was supposed to be Wednesday. I figured that maybe work is just that boring, and the days are just starting to melt together. I thought that the next day, which was supposed to be a Thursday, mind you, would come around, Will would be off, and everything would be normal. Next day, Will clocks in at 7.15 a.m., just like he had been for two days now. Hey Will, I asked. When do you work next? Uh, Friday. I stared at him for a good five minutes. Right, I said. I'm going to check something in the back real quick. Will shrugged and went back to wiping down the ice cream freezer. Just like I thought, the fucking clock was going ballistic again. The minute and hour hands were twitching in place, always snapping right back to 9.36 a.m. on the dot. I grabbed the ladder and strained to give it a couple bangs on the face. No change, unfortunately. I took a couple strongly worded emails to the big guys upstairs for anything to get fixed. Even after they reset the clocks, we were stuck on Wednesday for a while and then had to catch up with the rest of time for anything to be back to normal. So that's why I was gone for so long. Sorry about that. At least now, I'm never going to complain about a slow work day again. I put it off long enough. The results of the Employee Appreciation Month applications were... predictable. Take a wild guess who won yet again. The only upside to Chloe winning every goddamn month is that eventually, she'll be offered a management position and that means she'll be taking a little trip upstairs to the big guys themselves. If it all goes well, they'll extend the offer and her greedy self is going to accept. Then she'll be out of my hair for good. Something the big guys upstairs wanted to start doing is accepting donations for old VHS tapes. This has been a hit or miss endeavor. Yeah, we can get some awesome rare antiques, but we also get those people that don't understand basic logic. We got this lady who came in wanting to turn in some family videos. You heard me right, someone came into the store and told me, I want to donate these old home movies. I don't want my family anymore. Take them. Do with them what you will. Politely, of course, I declined. Ma'am, I'm sorry, I said, using my best customer service voice but the demand for other people's memories isn't that high right now. Try again in a couple weeks. Now, usually when people blow up on me, it takes a little build-up. 
not with this lady. She came unhinged in record time, and I mean literally unhinged. Her jaw fell onto the counter in a huge, almost yawn motion. Bigger than a snake, even. It came down to about her collarbone. She let out this high-pitched, grating screech, and held agonizing eye contact with me until Charlie came up from behind her and lifted her into the air, carrying her out into the parking lot and locking the doors until she got into her car to leave. The whole time she kept staring dead into my eyes, holding that one piercing note. I swear I could hear her screaming when I was getting ready for bed that night. Do you know how it feels to be washing your face and being terrified that as soon as you rinse, you'll see a wide-mouthed, black-eyed, wild woman behind you? Not fun. We got a couple complaints after she left too, as we had the doors locked for a good four hours after. I'm going to cut this one short. Again, really sorry for disappearing for so long. I'll put in a word to the big guys upstairs to maybe replace the clocks completely so that doesn't happen again. I'll hopefully see you next time. Have a good one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's narration. I want to give a huge thanks to last month's $5 and up patrons. TJW, Marcus B, Greg S, Peggy, Gage W, Shanda K, Rachel H, Tim W, Baltic, Jules L, Bet S, Lydia P, Teco M, Grayson H, and all the other $5 and up and $2 patrons on screen as well. All of your support makes these narrations possible, and I appreciate it a ton. If you'd like to join these lovely ghouls, I'd appreciate it if you check out my Patreon page. For just $1 a month, you'll get an exclusive narration that will never, ever be uploaded to my channel. Usually, one a bit too extreme for YouTube. So that's at least one extra video every month for just a dollar, if not more. For $2 a month, you'll get thanked in the end scroll of every video, and for just $5 a month, I'll shout you out at the end of multiple videos a month personally. You also get exclusive Discord roles for those perks as well. If you'd like to chat with me for a bit, you can join me on a monthly live stream for just $10 a month, and get a signed merch sticker for $25 a month. And if you're in the market for some horrifying shirts and hoodies, you can head on over to my Teespring store in the description as well. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Second Clancy. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time. Have a good night, everybody. Cheers.